back to part two of this wonderful little um, scene we have here of Cork City. It is the fountain um, in Fitzgerald's Park. And it's a wonderful little fountain um, with water coming down around the edges. Now in part one we've done these lovely soft kind of trees off in the distance and we got some kind of nice more prominent bushes and stuff just in the foreground. And we finished just putting some very loose um, leaf work and foliage just here. Okay, well there's a photograph, you can see that. Isn't that wonderful? So I'm going to carry on now, and um, I have my same palette. I'll tell you my colours again, just in case you missed part one, all right? We have titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium yellow pale, phthalo blue, some burnt cyanide, burnt umber, some black, and some cadmium red. Um, now, I am missing one colour. Oh, yes, a little touch of crimson. A small touch of crimson. So the next part, I suppose, is the reflections and the water. And it looks complicated, but let's simplify it. I have this medium brush. I'll try a medium brush this time. I'm going to dampen that with some turpentine, which I have. A little drop of linseed oil, just to help the flow. I'll dampen that just a little. I'm going to make a nice dark green. Okay, you can see on the photograph, it's a nice dark green all the way along. So let's try that. Let's take some cadmium yellow. And let's take some black. And I mean, that's pretty much a dark green, isn't it? Black and yellow. And I might add a touch of burnt umber to this. Uh, now, I want this nice and dark. The trick with reflections is to make them nice and dark. That's what I find. Now, let's try a touch of blue as well, just a hint. I find the trick with painting reflections is you need to keep the reflection nice and dark because that will really show off the ripples then when you come to painting the ripples. It will really, really show off those bright ripples. So now, look, you have a nice kind of a black and green there. Now let's start over here. Let me just, I'm just going to check it first. Now, I have dampened this with some um, linseed oil. Just a tiny, tiny bit of linseed oil, just to help the paint flow, because my canvas is very, very dry today. I don't know why, it's very, the paint is kind of soaking into it, and it's soaking in a bit too quick for my liking. Now, it's a little bit wet, so I'm going to take a little bit more yellow, just to kind of thicken it up that little bit more. So I'm going across here now with this lovely dark green, okay? And I'm going to add a little touch of white, perhaps, as I come across. And perhaps a little touch of blue. So I'm kind of catching those colours then as well. So if there's a pale blue up there, it's going to be a dark blue down here. A kind of a dark greeny kind of a blue. Would you agree? I'm going around my drawing that I've done, just very, very brief. Just very, kind of roughly, very quickly. And I come down here with this, just across there. Now I'm pulling the brush downwards all of the time, you see? Downward strokes. And let me see, now I'm going to go back here. I'm going to take an extra touch of black and brown, actually, in that. Um, now you see, I'm thinking ahead. So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to have a, a concrete fountain here all right and it's going to be nice bright colors on the tops of these so they will really separate it then from that dark background of the water to understand so always bear in mind whatever you're painting okay if you're painting something with water like this and you have a subject in front of the water make sure you can see the subject so in other words make sure it's not going to be the same color as the water otherwise it's just going to blend in and get lost and that I find is probably the trickiest part about painting something on a river with reflections um, simply because it can get lost in the background, you see? Now, I'm going to lighten it somewhat. I'm going to take some Naples yellow and a touch of white and I'm going to just start lightening it a little bit over here. And I'm going to soften it right across. So you can see, even with me now just doing these downward strokes, it's almost starting even to just look like a reflection itself, isn't it? It's fantastic. And it's so easy to use. Now, I painted that very thick. It's quite thin. 
Okay, you can see the canvas grain through the paint. It's not a really, really thick, full body kind of an oil paint. Now I'm going to take a little touch of burnt sienna, okay, because we have a little touch of burnt sienna here, don't we? So I'm just going to put a little touch of that, just there, look, very quickly. And I might take a hint of red, we have a little bit of red around here and there, so a bit of red with a touch of brown. Because I want to make it darker than what it's reflecting, you see? Like so. Just a little dab here and there. Perhaps a little there. And we could then add, just give this a wipe by no tissue. Don't clean it completely, just give it a good scrub. And we could even take some yellow. Because we have a little touch of yellow here and there as well. See, look. And then we'll, we'll soften all of these colors together. It's going to be wonderful. Now we have a dark tree, so I'm going to put in a nice dark green there. So a little black and a little yellow. And let's just put that in a dark tree. It's just a slight hint of a reflection, that's all, you see? It's very loose. Now we also have a tree which I would like to reflect. And you can see all of these are reflecting on the painting, aren't they? Now it's lashing outside the studio, you can really hear the rain hitting off the top of the roof. It's only, um, it's only a timber shed, so you can hear all the little noises. I will fix it, not to worry. Now let's pull a little bit of dark colour down like this, look. Now, I put on a microphone on me so you can hear me properly because with all this, with all this rain hitting off the top of the studio, it's very, very noisy in the studio. So, yeah, I have a microphone on me. You should be able to hear me much better now. I hope so anyway, okay? Now all I was doing, I was cleaning my brush and I'm going to take a very light blue a kind of a greeny blue, all right. So let's take a bit of white, a bit of phthalo blue and a touch of Naples yellow. And I'm just going to put in, suggest some light of the sky kind of color, okay? Just soften it in here and there. And I'm gonna leave this area until later because we have some dark reflections from this as well. So I'm just gonna come across here just slightly for now. I'm gonna soften everything up there look into the into that tree line soften this bright color just to suggest a little bit of light on the water as well okay now so i'm going to leave it at that and i'm going to do the same over here i'm going to add a little touch of that light color and it's just a kind of a natural that's what i love uh, using phthalo blue it's a very kind of a natural bluey color and it's great for kind of getting natural landscape colours like greeny blues that type of stuff it's a very lovely colour for that now so you can see what I've done I'm now going to very loosely take a soft blender brush and I have one let me find one for you where is my, my soft one now ok this one will do I must put a couple of more and I'm going to just pull everything down straight down very gently in a straight line all the way down, look. All the way across, come over here, soften everything together. Put it all down from top to bottom, okay? And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pull everything slightly across left and right, okay? And that just kind of softens it again. See, and it almost creates a little touch of a ripple here and there. And do the same over here, left and right. And there we go. Now, the next job is, I'm going to take a palette knife, one with a flat edge, and I'm going to take some of that bluey colour. So let's get some white, and let's pull it down here and mix it into that kind of soft bluey colour there. Now, a little bit on the edge of your knife, I'm just going to go along, and little horizontal lines here and there okay now i go along first just along the river bank and i'm barely touching the canvas here now i'm almost kind of scraping it through the paint on the canvas see it's just creating a nice kind of reflection effect of, an effect of a reflection impression of a reflection rather and let's go across under this wall up here And then let's take one or two just along here, look. 
Now I don't want to overdo this. So then I'm going to soften those very lightly again. Just to take the edge off of the, the paint, that's all. It's nothing more. Now, let me just stand back for a moment and take a look at what we have. Now, wasn't that a lovely reflection already? Coming on really nice, isn't it? So the next job I want to do is, I want to create some extra kind of ripples on the water. You'll see we have lots of ripples, don't we? So now, let me just make sure now that you can see everything fine. You can? Everything is fine. I'll take a little bit of wet white paint, okay? Very thin paint. And I'm just going to kind of go along and add some ripples along like that. Look. Here and there. Again, just to give the water this sort of ripply effect. Because it's not very, very still, the water. There is a bit of movement in it. Um, and look, it's a closed pond. There's no kind of exit, there's no outlet in the pond. But there is a lot of these kind of water jets that come up into the, the air and they ripple out, they create lots of ripples across the pond. So there is a lot of movement in the water itself. Okay? Now, I'll just leave it at that for now. And let's concentrate on our lovely wonderful fountain yes so i'm going to take another brush a small flat brush let me see let me find a nice small, small flat brush for you now here okay um my small stubby would be perfect for this if i could find it i have a nice little flat one here ah i have my little small stubby as well so and something with a nice kind of flat edge if you don't like using these, just use a detail brush, okay? Now, I'm going to start with a nice grey for the front of the pond here, all right? So let's go. Let's create a nice grey colour. Let's take some white, some black. Now, white and black will give you a lovely grey, won't it? So let's go with that first, okay? Now, it's quite thin. If you want it a bit thicker, just add a bit more white and then take a little bit more black. So it's nice and creamy now, all right? Nice and creamy. So let's go. We have the front section. It has a very slight kind of a curve. Okay, just a very small curve. And then it comes down on this side. And it comes across again. Like that, okay? Now, there we go. One thing I must do, I think I must, mm, I'm thinking I might just bring the reflection there down just a little bit more. Just a hint, yes? No, yeah, that's better. So we have that, okay. That's the front of it. And it's going to be darker on one side. So I'm just going to take some black for one side and maybe a touch of brown. So I'm just going to put that dark then on one side. And I'm going to soften it across and it'll lighten into the left side, okay? See? Like so. Now, we have another one, just above it here. This one, I'm just going to make straight. And as I said, use your pointy brush for this now, if it's a little tricky with the flat brush. But so, by all means, do it whichever way you feel is better for yourself, okay? So now we have that done. Next, I'm going to take my small round stubby brush. Now, any small brush you have will do fine. Let's take a little crimson and a little Naples yellow with lots of white. And I'm going to put a nice light spot on top. So it kind of 
It comes along like this, okay? And along like this. Nice and simple. And then it's going to turn around at the back. So, because to get the perspective, it's looking down slightly, you see, on the top, so you can just make out the back rim. So the rim kind of comes around like that at the back, and then it turns very sharply, you see? Now, don't worry about picking up that paint from the, the, the water. Don't worry about that at all. There we are. And the same on this side. So now we have our little round top. Now I'm making a small hint of a mauve colour, okay? Just for one side of this. Just to add a little bit of shade into it, you see? And what I might do then is actually switch to a small brush. I have a small pointy brush here for a little bit of detail. I'm going to add some light to the top one as well. So a little bit of light up here. Coming across and sort of disappearing, yes? Fading away into the back, the dark background. And then a nice light on top of that. So it's just a lot of small details. You don't have to be perfect. See? Now, okay, it's going up a bit there on one side, so let's just fix that. There we go. And I'm going to, with this brush then, take a nice dark purpley color again. Little blue and a bit of red. And I'm going to add some nice dark shadow over here, like so. Again, everything softening together. Um, take a touch of burnt umber in that. And come across under that ridge, you see? You have a little bit of a ridge there. So it's coming together, can't you see? It's just little touches of detail. And it's all about, I find it's all about the shadow. You have to get the shadow just right. Now, in between here, we have a little rim off in the distance, see, on the back side, coming around like that. So I'm going to put that in. And the same over here. Okay, and we'll take a little bit of burnt umber just inside here, just to show the inside of this fountain. So now we're just starting to make a little sense. It's all kind of coming together. So we have a nice dark spot now just in the center there. I'm going to take some burnt umber and a little black. And this is kind of really in darkness inside here. So I'm just going to fill that now with a dark colour. Come down the sides here nice and carefully. And it's going to come right past the back and down into the fountain, you see. And I do like just to keep things simple. I could be all day here putting in lots of little details, but I really don't want to. I just want to keep a nice simple impression of this scene. Okay, so there we are. So we have that done. All right. A little bit more of a curve perhaps on this one and then we'll add a little black around this side here just to give it a nice little bit of shadow just on one side 
And we can lighten the other side then as well, you see, just slightly also. Okay, now I'm going to add a little touch of darkness just here. And a little bit here. And I'm going to add some light to that side. So I'll take some cadmium red perhaps with a little yellow and then some white. Now I know that's a funny colour, it's like an orangey colour. But it's just to show the light coming in and catching the underside of this. Okay. Just a little. Let me get another bit. A bit more. Alright, that'll do. Look fine. Right, moving along, next we have the top section. Now we also have two bars coming down here actually, don't we? We have two kind of uprights coming down. I need to make this side a bit longer over here, I think. So I'll make that longer in just a moment, but we also have these two uprights to like support. One there, and we have one here. And then I'll make this side slightly wider, just to make it a bit more even, yes. And we have a little another piece coming up here then, which is again very dark. Let's just take some brown and a little hint of black. So I know what it looks like, it's just, it kind of comes out like this at the end, you see. I'm not going to any great lengths now to get this perfect. It's just an impression. But I know it's there. So it comes out like that. And then there's another little piece coming along the top of this. Up here. But do try it, it's a lot of fun. It's nice to try something, challenge yourself like this. Because I know, although there's a lot of time in it, it will be worth it in the end. And you know it will. It's just about doing section by section by section. Now, we have another piece on top of this. Okay, it kind of wiggles down like that. And a little ball on the very top. Okay, a little ball like that. And that is pretty much the fountain done. Now all we have to do with this is add some lights and darks. Okay, now very simple. Let's just take some light color. Okay, let's get a hint of Naples yellow. And let's put a hint of light just here and there on some of these, okay? See? So that's one. And we have another one on this one here. And perhaps a bit on that ball. Move across. See what I mean? Nice simple lights. Will I zoom in for you? I'll zoom in a little bit there, look. Now, there we are. Nice simple highlights. And I'm even going to add a touch of pink into one or two of them. Because I think a nice light pink will complement some of the colours. And let's go with a little pinky colour here and perhaps a little bit there. I'm going to go with some nice bright colour now, alright? Some nice bright highlights. Some nice sunny highlights. One or two here. 
okay softening in and I'm going to put one or two here coming across and I put one or two on this one we're getting there now aren't we now there's a little bit of fixing I need to do just a little bit okay and then I'm going to take a detail brush and try and get some nice little bits of detail some nice real nice darks in here on this all right so a nice watery pointy brush with some black and I'm just going to go under this with a nice dark black just to give it some definition that's all um, okay let's come down this side of that perhaps along there and I go underneath this one just trying to keep my hand as steady as I can now as I keep saying you don't need to copy this technique all of the time you can just make this your own you can add in you can use this technique and use it for a different type of painting see what I mean it doesn't have to be this painting you can paint something completely yourself from your town or from your area if you have a little fountain that you like you know you could just copy what I'm doing and put it into your own scene now a little dark just along there for the edge of the path all right and a little bit up here then I'm going to put in some nice bright lights now I'm going to take white with a hint of blue so white with a lot of blue or well, a lot of white with a hint of blue rather and just come along the top of the fountain here and just hit that with a little of that colour, okay? And the only reason for this now really is to separate the top of the, the ridge of the fountain, just to separate that from all the darks. You see what I mean, look? Just give it a bit of light, a light catching the top of it. And the same on this one here. Do you know what I mean? It's all about how the light catches and okay that's all right now I need a little bit of light on something there a little bit just down on this one and a little bit here maybe that okay let's sit back and take a look that's fine next I'm gonna do the grass and all that stuff down underneath and this is gonna be easy peasy now that's the hard part done okay all the hard work is finished in just that section now we can really crack on and go to town with this let's take our medium brush that we had earlier and let's get a nice dark green so I'm taking some black and some yellow nice rich dark green now okay and let's just go along I'm gonna go along out here first like this I'm gonna create the shape of all this grass first all right this grassy kind of area which is which the pond which the fountain is sitting on so I'm going to come along like that and come around like this I don't want to lose my fountain so I'm being careful just here all right there we go let's go with a bit darker a little bit of blue and a bit of black Perhaps even a bit of brown. And go right in here. I always put in my darks first. That's generally what I tend to do. So I put in a nice rich dark background like that, you understand? And then 
give it a quick wipe with some turpentine and some tissue and we're going to some nice lighter colours. So let's take some yellow with a little tint of white and then we start hitting with some highlights, you see? Like that, understand? Perhaps let's just pull some yellow on its own. Get some nice rich colour going. Just dab, dab, dab here and there, you see? Easy peasy. And it's only just suggesting little plants and little bits of this and bits of that. Lots of different colours and shapes going on. See what I mean? Isn't that lovely? Now you can take little touches of red if you like. Let's take some cadmium red even and a touch of the yellow also. And suggest a few little little flowers here and there. Like that. And then we can let's get some more actually, a little touch of bright red with a touch of Naples yellow. Suggest one or two really bright ones look. Oh that's nice, I like that. Isn't that lovely? Now I need more yellow on my palette. See how easy that was now, it only took me two minutes. Just gentle touches with the brush, that's all. Just try it, don't be afraid. Now let's take some yellow and let's take some white. And let's really get some nice bright ones in over here. And one or two along here. The reason for this really, you see, is it's only just to catch the eye, that's all. And there we are. Now, that's pretty much that sorted. Next thing I'm gonna, I'm gonna do is just suggest a few um, rocks, that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm just gonna suggest a couple of bits of rocks with some light gray. Okay, let's take a bit of light gray. And let's just assume, because I know there is lots of rocks and that kind of thing down around us on the bottom here, where it meets the water. So I'm just taking some black, a bit of brown, and let's put in a hint of one or two rocks, just here. So we have some darks, now let's just put in a couple of lighter colours. See? Tiny little dabs of colour. Just to suggest a few bits and pieces. The next job I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some dark now down. So I'm going to make some of that nice dark colour and reflect that colour down. So again, some yellow and some black. And I want to make sure now that you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to zoom back slightly with the camera. Right, some yellow and black. Now that might be a bit dark. Let's get some more yellow in that. There. Nice thick paint, okay? Lots of paint on your brush. And let's come right down like this. And get that nice colour in. Again, going right up underneath there. And coming over to this side. See? How easy was that? Wasn't it? Very, very simple. Now let's maybe even take some dark. Put a bit of dark over here. There's a couple of darker patches here and there. And then give your brush a wipe again. And let's get some of the yellow. Perhaps take a touch of Naples yellow as well. And suggest some of those lighter colours. Kind of dotted around here and there, isn't it? See, it's just a mixed match of all these colours going through the reflection. And we also have a touch of red. So let's take a touch of red. And we have a touch of red here. A touch of red there. And a little touch of the pink. 
see? So I'm going to take another smaller brush with some of the lighter kind of bluey colour that we had earlier. If you remember, a little touch of phthalo blue with some white and a touch of the green. And I'm just going to continue that colour on across here. And continue that colour on across here. And now, this is when the magic happens. I'm going to soften these colours down again. Okay. We take a soft brush. We find a nice soft brush. Here we go. Okay, nice soft brush. And I'm going to pull very gently. Now, I'm being very, very light with this. Pulling all of this down together. See, like so. Down into the water, into the lighter colour. Okay, then give it a wipe on some tissue and let's pull across, nice and gently, across the reflection. See? Now, isn't that a lovely soft reflection? Isn't that lovely? And then we simply take what we've done before, take some white on your knife and let's just go along the edge of this with some bits of white just to separate that from the reflection, just to tell you that it's sitting on the water. You see? And they're always horizontal, okay? These ripples are always horizontal ripples. Left to right, left to right. Don't kind of follow the curve around like this with your knife. Always keep them horizontal as you go up, up and around the curve. Okay? So now, we have that done. Next, I'm going to, with my small brush, add in a couple of little ripples again. So some white, maybe a hint of blue. I'm just going to go along and put in a suggestion of these little ripples just popping along here and there on the water. And I'm hardly even touching the canvas now to be quite honest. It's very loose. I'm just dragging it across. And we'll do the same on this side. Call a small couple out there. So, how's that looking? Now we're short one more little thing that we have to do. One more little thing. Besides a few people and stuff like that, we have to put some nice water coming off of our fountain. Isn't that right? So let me get a nice soft fan brush. I'm going to take some Thalo Blue. Now this is going to be very dry, okay? And a little white. No thinners in this at all. So we have a very light blue. And I'm just simply going to go like that. Okay? Just a little. I'm not overdoing it. I don't want to completely ruin the fountain. So I'm just going to give it a slight hint of water falling over. Like that. You understand? It's only a suggestion. And perhaps just a little on top. And there we are. And that's our fountain. Finished. Wasn't that lovely? See, it was easy, wasn't it? Now let's put in some people. Let's take some Naples yellow. And let's put some people walking. Let's put some people walking over here. And let's put someone in black. It's really just so you can see, so it catches the eye. But you can do whatever colour you like. 
and the arm goes around like that and then we have some hair all right then perhaps a little shadow coming off of them let's pose one or two people up around the corner up there perhaps and we can put someone walking across here this is actually like a bridge it crosses and on the other side of this wall there's another little pond so this crosses between the two ponds you see so people cross here all of the time okay let's put another there and we grab a little bit of black like so isn't this wonderful now? And that is it. Now, I might add a little more colour up in the foliage up here. I might take some maple yellow, actually. And I might even take a hint of sienna. Because the sienna is a nice autumn kind of a colour. There we go. And how about that? And I think we're pretty much finished with this. You can continue on and put in loads more if you like. Um, I just wanted to show you how I done the fountain. And, um, you know, I would normally spend a lot more time doing this. But for the purpose of the tutorial, I just wanted to give you a quick impression of how it was done and how I kept it simple, you know. But I will kind of go along and add little tiny details here and there, small, small details. I might add a little touch of highlight to this over here, a little bit, you know. Um, what else could we do now? Add a little touch of a watery colour to the top of this coming down and perhaps even just refine some of the highlights here and there okay add a bit more of a sunny color to some of them you see uh, perhaps a little there uh, like that but in general I think I've achieved what I wanted um, I, I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with that let me zoom in now and show you what we have created oh yeah I forgot one thing I want to soften some of these ripples just along here just one or two of them just want to soften them out I don't want them to be too harsh okay that'll do fine and there we are. Nice soft colours in the distance. You can see the little hint of mauve in those distant trees makes a big difference, doesn't it? It kind of pushes them right off into the distance. And then we did our reflections on the front by the fountain. And there is the fountain, all done. Isn't that wonderful? And I kept it nice and simple. You saw me doing it, it was just simple little brush strokes, that's all. And there we are. Painting finished. Isn't that lovely? So, there we go. <coughs> I turn around and you can see me and talk to me here. There we go, perfect. Did you enjoy that? I thought that was really fun. I'm going to frame that now and I will hang it somewhere. Perhaps in the, ca in the cafe. Oh, I'm tired. I must get a cup of tea. A nice cup of tea to wake me up. So come on, have a have a shower off of that and see what you think. Um, you can even just use the techniques and put them into your own painting, your own kind of a scene. But it's, I, I hope it has helped you understand just how to keep things nice and simple. Um, you know, I don't try and go into too much detail. Um, just keep it simple. You can put little bits of detail here and there. Um, at the very end, just add little hints of detail. 
But in general, I just think a nice impression like this looks wonderful, you know. So do give it a try. And I will see you back here next week with another tutorial on easy oil painting slash Stephen Conway oil painting um, on my new channel. And thank you so much for your support and your kind comments. And uh, you're all doing very, very well. You are really, I've noticed a lot of you who would be regular followers on my Facebook page even. And I've noticed a lot of you are really, really coming on and really getting very, very good with the painting. And your scenes are improving every single time you put a new painting up online. I can see how you're improving so much. And uh, it's amazing to see but, you know, it's this journey that we kind of have together. Um, I can see how you're progressing all of the time from the very, very beginning. And there's a huge difference. So you should really give yourself a pat on the back. You're doing very, very well. You really are fantastic. So it's been a pleasure. I will see you again next week. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. And God bless you all. Happy painting.